Fate and the Oh my lord. Feedback, feedback. Is that you, John Metcalf? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Right. That's it. I think. Yeah, everyone all right? Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Just, just try to kill everyone. You don't need a hearing aid when we do that. Um, okay, so welcome to the Cabinet meeting for March. Uh, item one on the agenda is the minutes of the previous meeting, pages 5 to 18. Is there someone that can propose those minutes as a true correct record? Uh, right, okay, lovely. Thank you very much. I'll just sign. Thank you very much. If I move on to item two, um, it, which is declarations of interests, uh, Councillor Jones Evans. Thank you, Chair. Just, just in um, item number five, uh, five A, armed forces covenant. Uh, my mother is a veteran of the Royal Air Force, and my father is a veteran of the Parachute Regiment. Councillor Jarman. Thank you, Leader. Uh, yes, to declare that my dad is a veteran of the Royal Army Medical Corps under 5A, and also to do declare under 7B uh, that uh, my father suffers from vascular dementia and is under the care of the local authority and under white care. Thank you. Okay, and I true, uh, too uh, declare an interest in item 5A, the Armed Forces Covenant, as my husband is an ex-veteran, and I have close members, and indeed, um, someone shortly joining the Royal Navy too. So, um, yes, we're a very military family. So I declare an interest in that. Are there any others? Nope. Okay. Move on to item three on the agenda, which is public question time. Uh, we have no um, public um, in the gallery. Well, we do have one member of the public that doesn't wish to ask a question. So um, we uh, have received uh, one, we've received two. Uh, public questions, and we will give a res written response to um, to one of the answers. And I believe, uh, Councillor Julie Jones Evans, you would like to answer the second question. Yeah, yes, thank you. Yes, second question um, did come in, in a bit late, but I have managed to prepare um, a, a statement which I think would be helpful. The thrust of the question really was basically what, what are we as a council doing to um, attract visitors this summer? So um, obviously we work with Visit Isle of Wight. Um, they are our destination uh, marketing organisation and we're very successful in getting a, um, a second um, round of five years of, of, of delivering the marketing for the Isle of Wight. So if you just, um, just, just indulge me just for a moment, Leader, I've got a, a comprehensive note here. And Mrs McDonald, I'll send this over to you, so don't worry um, about getting this. Um, so it's anticipated the staycation market for 2022 will continue with businesses already showing signs of filling up at key booking period and, and beyond. Research shows that 94% of the visitor economy on the island is UK domestic. Short haul near Europe visitors will begin to come back during 2022 also. However, the longer haul inbound market is still quite unpredictable with a resumption in 2023, a more realistic return date. The current crisis in Europe will of course have an impact on short haul visitors. Visit Britain, Visit England research on consumer sentiment carried out in late February shows that 59% of respondents have said they'll be taking, taking UK overnight trips in the next 12 months, as opposed to 43% going overseas, which is a positive trend. However, there will potentially be later booking lead time for up to about 21% of respondents. The messaging that the Isle of Wight will communicate pre-Easter will revolve around the key messages of explore, discover, unwind, adventure, escape and roam, and will be supplemented by a call to action, come play for the day or book now and stay, which covers both the staying and day market, uh, visitor markets. During March, the messaging will feature in BBC Country File Walking Guide, Walk Magazine, Hampshire Life, targeted run of network digital advertising, social media activities, primarily over Facebook and Instagram, bus shelter advertising in and around Portsmouth and Southampton, poster sites at um, South Southwestern Railway stations and various activities around the Spring Walking Festival, including competition prize of return, foot passengers travels with Hover Travel, Red Funnel or White Link, free bus travel with Southern Vectis, a two-night stay with one Holyrood, 
evening meal at the castle in Newport and lunch hamper from Bluebells at Riddlesford Farm, promoting the car-free approach to visiting the island. There will be a three-week spot advertising radio campaign on Greatest Hits Radio, South Coast, which will include a competition with presenter endorsements and stings. The competition will feature a break to the island for a family of up to five, <clears throat> two adults and up to three children. They will stay for three nights at one of the Park Dean resorts on the island, with return car ferry with White Link or Red Funnel, an aqua park session at Tapnell Farm, dinner at the Cow, with a family ticket to Monkey Haven. The Visit Isle of Wight team have recently attended the motorhome caravan and camping exhibition in Birmingham at NC, which is exceptionally busy. I know that leads, that's one thing you have highlighted as that's potentially a very good market for us to, to explore. Next week, the Visit Isle of Wight team are attending a travel media event in London, where the team have 60 physical appointments with travel media journalists, with many more wishing to meet at the networking events being held. The Visit Isle of Wight team are attending an excursions group travel event at Twickenham Stadium on 19th of March. This event is one of the key group travel events in the calendar organised and operated by Tourism South East. The Visit Isle of Wight team have a presence at the Virtual Explore GB event run by Visit Britain, Visit England over three days in March, where they will engage virtually with tour operators from all over the world. Visit Isle of Wight are working in partnership with the Isle of Wight Council to deliver the marketing and communications, including the on-island business and town, parish and community council engagement for the Tour of Britain, um, in, um, which we're all really looking forward to, that will play, take place on 11th September. This event is a potential game changer for exposure of the island to a key market of cycling, both the on-road and off-road markets. And as you know, the Isle of Wight Council make a substantial investment into uh, making this event happen. The Spring Isle of Wight Walking Festival organised and operated Visit Isle of Wight, working closely with volunteer leaders, the Isle of Wight Ramblers and National Trust, will take place in May. Um, 7th to 15th of May and currently has 60 walks to choose from and sign up to, to cross the island. Still waiting for a few more to be finalised, um, should end up with a maximum of 70 walks. It also encompasses the famous Walk the White event in aid of Mountbatten, very much part of the festival focused on raising funds for Mountbatten. In the process of finalising a training pro programme for frontline tourism and non-tourism workers such as taxi drivers and bus drivers, front of house teams, and a whole lot more to become island tourism ambassadors. This is something that the Isle of Wight Council supported through the Economic Development Board with some of our funding that we've had through business development. So this would be basically turning everyone who, turn, who wants to be part of it, who, anyone who touches, comes into contact with any visitor, turn us all into ambassadors for this wonderful place where we live. Um, so that's more information will be coming up very soon. Um, I'm almost finished. Um, everything that's been communicated very much has inclusivity, sustainability and accessibility at its heart, whilst encouraging visitors to enjoy everything the island has to offer as being one of the only, only seven UNESCO biosphere reserves in the UK, or the 50% of the island designated as um, AOMB. Discover paradise on your doorstep and for islanders, love where you live. So thank you for indulging me there, but I thought it was a really important question um, and it needed a full answer. So thank you, Leader. Um, and I hope you've got a copy of that that we can get out to the media, actually, because, um, yeah, the poor press there. Yes, trying to write that down. Yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. OK, <laughs> that would be most useful. Thank you for that. And it just goes to prove um, how fantastic the island is, um, how beautiful of the island is, how fragile the island is. So, um, yeah, it's it's very good. Thank you. OK, so we move on to um, item four. There's no further questions from the public, um, which is the chairman's announcements. I was very proud um, on Tuesday to be part of the National Women's Day. Um, I'd like to thank Eve White, who provided us with a suffragette flag, which was great. I'm really, really proud to see that um, as I came into County Hall. So um, thanks for that, Eve. It was, um, it was, there was quite a few of us uh, councillors that turned up to support it. Um, and, and some of the men, which was nice as well. Um, so that was really good. I had a very um, useful meeting with the unions uh, this week, um, also on Tuesday. Um, and it's good to know that um, we've, we've got, I've got very good support from staff. Um, uh, it's, it's, just, it's just really reassuring, very nice. Um, the Ukraine, um, as an alliance, we, um, we have donated money and we've been um, giving our time to um, help collect items. 
we are going to continue to try and work with um, some of the senior and management so that we've got a programme ahead of anything that may happen, whether that means that we are um, trying to take people on board. We, we don't know what, what the government is going to do yet, but we are here ready to help. We have to be. Um, and just this morning, I was notified by Councillor Love that MPACT and the Isle of Wight College, the kids at the Isle of Wight College and the MPACT, amazing college, um, we're um, loading up all of the trucks. We've got two big trucks that um, that left the island today, all items donated by island people, um, and they've gone in big trucks today to be taken off to the Ukraine to help. So um, I think that's really good. Um, did you want to come in on that, Carl? Or, you know, you're happy with that? Okay, yeah, happy with that. So thank you to all those people on the island that donated. We will uh, continue to wear our flags in support of the Ukraine um, and anything that we can do, uh, please, you know, and if, if there's anything out there to the wider club, please let us know. Um, I met with a government minister today um, um, and there's an announcement coming out. I think it's something to do with the marine industry, um, I, uh, but we'll have more details um, as a press release becomes apparent. Um, uh, I had to attend today uh, a, a speaker a speaking as a women in leadership uh, role today, um, and it was it was really good. It was it was mainly teaching staff, um, but it was really empowering. My my thanks went to them from all of us for the fact of the past two years they've kept us going. They've kept the children educated. They've tried to they've had to bring in so many. I would say that everybody is tired. You know, the staff tired, the care staff, everybody's tired. This pandemic has really took things out of us. We all need a break. Um, last night, I was very pleased to attend the Safer Streets um, meeting, which was um, online it, um, and it was done in Portsmouth. I'm extremely uh, delighted to say they've won 450,000 um, for a violence against women campaign. So I've got um, absolutely so much support for what they're doing. The Isle of Wight is going to get um, much better CCTV in to make people feel safe. Having known women that have been given the date, drape, uh, the date rape drug, um, and seeing their, their shame when they shouldn't have felt shame. Um, it, it, it's very important to me. I've also got two daughters, um, you know, who don't feel safe and that, that shouldn't be. Um, interestingly, they were on about bystanders and whether we sit back and watch these things or we don't. Uh, if you look up online, there's a very good thing called Don't Be That Guy campaign because it shouldn't be that women should have to dress in a certain way, but it should be that, that men take a responsibility too. So, um, and it's all about proactive policing too. So I was very pleased to attend that one. Um, I shall shortly be having my first granddaughter arriving. Um, so I may even be taking a little bit of time out um, to spend some very special and precious time. So um, that's all I have to say on the chairman's announcements. I will move straight into item 5A, which is the Armed Forces Covenant. So it's not often I get a paper, I have to say. So it's quite exciting having this, really. Um, as I said, uh, my, my husband is a, a veteran. My, my mum and dad both worked um, at White Shipyard during the war. So um, it's very important to me. Uh, I can't stress enough how, how much we need to support the armed forces, particularly when they come out, because they, um, and I'm really pleased that Ride have got a, a, a veterans hub. Uh, and I know the British Legion do an awful lot too for the veterans. So um, the item is there. Um, I, I, I propose that we accept and we join up to this Armed Forces Covenant with force um, and with glee and everything else. Uh, is there a seconder for that, please? Everybody? Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> um, and all those in favour of us supporting the Armed Forces Covenant for another few years. Fabulous. Thank you very much for your support. Thanks to all those veterans. Um, we've shortly got the 40th anniversary of the Falklands, and I do wish to make sure that we do some kind of um, commemoration around that, please, because we did lose um, an island boy on HMS Coventry. So I do want to make sure I do something. Thank you. OK, moving on to item 6A, which is the Holiday Activity and Food. Um, we have the uh, 
Cabinet Member Debbie Andre, Councillor Debbie Andre, who is joining us virtually because she's at a conference um, doing more training. So I'll I'll hand over to Debbie and hopefully Deb, your it all works. Thank you, Leader. I'm hoping that you can hear me. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, I'm absolutely delighted to be able to um, put forward our next round in the Holiday Activities and Fund programme for the Easter holidays. We've had 10 providers come forward and I'm really grateful to our community groups and volunteers who, without whom this, these schemes would just not happen. We've got a, a varied activities on offer and I'm delighted to say that there are activities that span pretty much across the whole island, including more rural areas. So it's um, it's a really good program. It's um, it's specifically aimed at children with free school meals, but any surplus places can be made um, available to the wider community. And especially in light of the current situation with um, the energy crisis and families in poverty, this scheme is becoming more and more needed. So really, really pleased that we're able to offer this Easter grant programme and happy to take any questions. Um, yep, yeah, we've got one question from Councillor Jonathan Bacon. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is a simple one. Uh, and it is what steps can be taken or will be taken to ensure that the benefits of this scheme extend to the more rural areas of the island. Thank you for that, that question, Councillor Bacon. It has to be said that we are to a degree dependent on our providers and community groups coming forward. But as this programme has been now going for some time and we do, we do go out to the whole of the island to our community providers as I, I i cited if i could refer you to appendix one you will see that there are um activities provided pretty much across the island. Councillor Andre, you've frozen. I don't know whether it's better to come off camera or whether you finish now and Councillor Bacon can propose your motion because he's here. Sorry, I think you might have lost me then. Yeah, we did. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Bacon's happy with that response. Um, he will now propose the motion as you can't do it because you're not here physically, Deb. Is that okay? That's fine. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Chair. The, the recommendation, just, just for those who are watching, uh, because Councillor Andre is not physically present and understand the rules are that she cannot formally propose the paper. So I've agreed to do that. Um, and the recommendation is at paragraphs 9 and 10 of the report that Cabinet approves the award of grants to the organisations identified uh, in Appendix 1 to the total value of £63,340.80. And secondly, that in the event that a provider is unable to fulfil the funded number of places or has to amend its offer in light of COVID, it is recommended that the Cabinet member delegates approval to the Director of Children's Services to reallocate any underspent Easter HEF grant funding to ensure an Isle of Wight wide offer within the grant allocation for Easter of £64,223. Any such reallocations will be determined in consultation with the Cabinet member. That is the recommendation and I'm happy to propose it and look for a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Ian Stevens. Any more questions or comments? No? OK, move to the vote. All those in favour, please. Thank you very much. Unanimous. OK, so we move on to item 7A now, which is the report of the Cabinet Member for Adult Social Care and Public Health. 
Um, item 7A is the public health annual report. Is Simon Bryant on? Oh, there he is. As if by magic he appears. Fabulous. Um, so, um, yeah, who's Carl. going? Carl? Uh, thank you, Chair. This is the first of two papers which uh, I have to um, um, present tonight. Um, and I would like to invite um, uh, my Director of Public Health, Simon Bryant, to uh, do a, a very brief, um, uh, just a few words, if that's all right, Simon. Thank you. Uh, many thanks, Councillor Love. Uh, this is uh, an honour to present my annual report. Just to remind colleagues, every year I write a, an independent report on a particular issue of interest. And this year I have uh, focus the report on the impact of mental health and well-being uh, of COVID uh, and uh, on the population focusing on uh, across the life course on children, young people, uh, those of a working age and the older population. The report sets out a number of recommendations uh, which I'll be uh, working across with partners to uh, deliver and it's a, an assessment of health and uh, as I said I focus on mental health and well-being this year. Very happy to take any questions. So thank you for um, uh, uh, your report, Simon, there. Um, this is, um, as uh, Mr. Bryant has said, um, a, an annual report um, which has been well constructed, and I thank him for that, focusing on um, uh, mental health in this particular occasion, which is, of course, significantly on the uh, radar for everybody, given the um, events over the last 18 months. So um, I'd like to move to the recommendation, unless anybody has any... Uh, Questions about that? Oh. Am I allowed to do that? Is it you that's... No, you do the recommendation, please. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Apologies. So, so the recommendation is to note the annual report of the Director of Public Health 2021. Seconded. All those in favour? And our thanks, Simon. Um, you've been absolutely sterling in this, you know, past well, the past two years with this COVID and everything else, you've done an absolutely superb, you've always been on hand, you've always been there to answer the questions, even when you can't answer the questions because the government haven't given you the right answers, you've done your best. So um, thank you so very much. Thank you. Many thanks, Leader. OK, so we move on to your second item, uh, Councillor Love, which is the Isle of Wight Dementia Strategy. Thank you, Chair. So this uh, strategy has been shaped um, around what we've heard from local people um, in, in a, an ongoing uh, consultation uh, over many, many months. We've worked in partnership with volunteers, with the community and, of course, the independent sector and health colleagues. Um, the strategy provides a framework to move forward, reshaping of dementia and services on the island. So basically what we've done is brought a lot of papers together that have been floating around for a number of years into one strategy. Of course, the strategy um, moving forward will be um, uh, uh, underpinned by an action plan which delivers. So this is the strategy. It's an opportunity to re refocus on what... Um, on what matters for local people and getting it right for local people listening to their voice and in fact today i went down to the um uh, the um, uh, care partnership um where i listened to um the stories of our uncared paid leavers uh uncared pair uncared pay people <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, on um, on the uh, and their listening to their stories, um, which were incredibly powerful and uh, emotional. Um, and um, so, therefore, I know that um, um, our teams are going to be working incredibly hard in the background to get this the strategy in place. But but more importantly, to move the. Um, uh, all of the findings from that into something which is workable for the future. I'm happy to take any questions. Um, I believe Councillor Andre has a question. Uh, Councillor Andre, if you keep your camera off and just speak, it might it might work better. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Yes. Are you getting feedback? No, we've got yeah. Okay. My question is. The strategy seems to focus on family and unpaid carer. Uh, 
it can become increasingly difficult to sustain this kind of support. And I note from the report that there is a lack of respite care, which could help to extend existing provision of family and unpaid care. <coughs> My question is, what is being done working with our independent providers to recruit, train and retain care professionals who specialise in dementia, which requires a specialist approach? Thank you. Thank you for your question. The, the strategy gives us a framework to shape uh, the marketplace as we move forward. We'll be able to focus on developing the services that people really need. This includes respite support for unpaid carers as, as a priority, which fits in with what I actually discussed with them today. In the past, the Council has commissioned expert training for the sector on caring for people with dementia. We will be doing this again. We, you know, we'll be pressing forward with that. All the local independent providers have indicated that they welcome this opportunity. And the third point is that recruitment and retention is a national challenge and continues to be so on the island. Local professionals in the care needs must be recognised as such. And I think I'll leave that there if that's OK. OK, thank you, uh, Councillor oh. Love. That's um, uh, Councillor Jonathan Bacon, then Councillor Hughes Jones Evans. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Love, my question is simply on the um, if you could comment on the balance both in the report and, and what is appropriate between uh, treatment measures and preventative measures and support, and what emphasis we can and should be giving to ensuring these conditions as far as possible do not arise. Public health is a, um, and the way that we work with prevention it is a key priority. We are going to put more emphasis into prevention without any doubt. That's what we've all discussed. That's where we feel that the, the emphasis is, not just because that reduces the costs to the, to the uh, council, but because that helps people to live happier, healthier lives. And that's what we want to do. This is all about enabling people to live at home in their own uh, environments um, and be supported. Councillor Jones Evans. Thank you, Leader. Um, Councillor Love, I just want to sort of say thank you really to you and the team for doing this work. Um, it's quite heartbreaking when you read it. And I just want to just really just sort of pick up on a, on a couple of items that have sort of um, stuck out for me. And one is, you know, the, the demographics, you know, what we're looking at with our ageing population and that you know, the direction we're going in with this with more and more people over 65. Um, that, that, that's, that's what the, the outlook is. So this work's really needed now, isn't it? So we can prepare for, the, for what is coming. We can see what, what's coming down the road. But, you know, I, I've, I've got a very dear friend of mine who, who's looking after his mother. And, you know, I've seen how it, you put your life on hold as a, as a carer, as, as an unpaid carer. But reading some of these the, the quotes in this report so on 104, when they're looking for some respite, they've they're made to feel like it's a criminal, you know, it's criminal to, to actually ask for a break and having to cancel holidays the last minute. It's just that they, these people need this, this support the most. So just so my heart goes out to, to people that are in this situation, 15,000 people that are living with, with this on the Isle of Wight. And just say thank you so much for you and the team for doing this work. I look forward to the action plan and doing what we can as a council to support you all. So thank you. I think it's important to say that you know the teams have worked incredibly hard. Dementia is going to be our number one priority as we move into the future, simply because we're expecting the numbers to substantially grow. And the impacts from COVID mean that this will continue long into the future in terms of isolation and so on. And as the public health director has reported in his comments, that, that it is a priority, is dementia. So this is the beginning of what I see a change but what really matters now is that it's underpinned by the action points that come along afterwards and that will be the next priority where all the detail comes along from there and the teams have worked incredibly hard on that and i'm very grateful for them for doing so okay um i too uh, thank the team i know staffing has been an issue um across the board actually and certainly during covid and the team have been absolutely incredible at keeping us, uh, keeping our vulnerable adults safe. So our sincere thanks to each and every one of them.
sincerely. So could you propose the motion and then we'll get seconded and we will vote. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The Cabinet approves the system-wide Isle of Wight dementia strategy, enabling the, enabling the strategy to progress for approval by the Integrated Care Partnership. And that's seconded by Councillor Jones-Evans. All those in favour, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Move on to item nine, um, which no, oh, I've skipped one. Eight. Sorry. Oh, as if, as if, as if I could forget my deputy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, item 8A, uh, which is the report of the cabinet member for community protection, digital transformation, housing provision, and housing needs. Uh, did I miss anything? No. OK, so um, this is the Isle of Wight Council digital strategy for 2021 to 2026. Councillor Ian Stevens, please. Thank you, Leader. Um, I've got someone sat behind me who could equally do this job and uh, probably do it 10 times better. But I'm, I'm, I'd like to thank our uh, uh, corporate ICT manager, or whatever we call him now, head of. But any, anyway, he leads his team very, very well. Um, and I must say, uh, uh, when you work with teams that are talented and uh, uh, quite uh, well led, then you know that you've, you've got a good team and it's a pleasure to work with them, I must say. So thank you and thank the team. I'm just going to, I'm going to allow you to speak, uh, Roger, because um, you don't often come into cabinet, and I note that Claire is not here. So, uh, what I would say that, yeah, the um, the current digital strategy um, has reached its nat natural conclusion. It's coming to an end. Therefore, we're going for a, a new Isle of Wight Council digital strategy from 2022 to 27. Um, I will read out the recommendation in a moment, but um, this new strategy is a result of. Uh, wide-ranging um, con consultation both internally and externally with our council um, teams and staff and indeed stakeholders so uh, it's it's had a thorough grounding and uh, we've received information and uh, opinion and uh, worked with it what i would say that um if you go if you ever look at the strategy which is here i think that uh, page 289 is not a bad page um, it's my forward and it's my photograph on the right. So I say that and it's, it's quite a rounded uh, um, forward indeed. So that's, that says it all really. Um, uh, what we have got is um, in, the, in the strategy document, uh, four key themes. Um, that of Digital Island and also Digital Council, uh, Digital Citizens and Digital Intelligence. And within, within the documentation in this report, it does explain how and how and where these um, headlines fit within the um, within the strategy. Roger, is there anything you would like to mention in, on behalf of uh, the staff and your uh, team with regard to this? That I might miss out, but I'm glossing over. Thank you, Councillor. Um, yes, I'd like to thank um, the ICT team who helped me put this together as well as the councillors in front of me who've been consulted on this during the process and fed back to me who's most appreciated. Um, the strategy similar to the one um, Councillor Love just presented, this digital strategy is a framework, um, program of works and projects and plans within that will come from this moving forwards. It does um, propose a working group led by Councillor Stevens is set up following um, approval of the strategy and to help coordinate those uh, works and efforts. You will note that there is no hard, um, hard uh, um, line path that we're going to take because obviously IT and uh, especially within the uh, local government field is ever changing and uh, to try and uh, put forward a pathway you cannot put anything in stone it has to be um, it has to evolve and take forward new legislation new ways of working etc so it's it's not something that we can actually preordain 
where we're going and what we're doing. But what we can do is um, bring forward a board um, that will be active and uh, take, uh, take things forward and also take on board any eventuality that uh, comes forward in the Isle of Wight Council, which um, corporate IT can uh, take a hand with. And may I just say that uh, corporate IT did a fantastic job um, prior to us coming in as administration with the pandemic and the, um, and the working from home and the ad more agile working and, and, and the teams that uh, meetings that were set up. Uh, a godsend, and I'll tell you what, some other local authorities throughout the land suffered as I found out through the local government association in London, we were very fortunate. We didn't feel the pain that other uh, organisations did. So I wanted, uh, that's one of the big um, contributions that IT um, brought forward. And really, it should be acknowledged. It should be heralded as a success. And that is why we pay for our corporate IT. That is why we've got... Uh, a good standard of um, officer and uh, understanding of what we need and where we're going with it. So without further ado, um, I'd just like to say that um, page 279, um, the recommendation. Now, I believe you wanted to come in with something that I was going to accept, uh, Councillor Jarman. Yes, please. Thank you, Councillor Stevens. Uh, just to delete the heading Digital Island Potential Activities from the top of pages 302 to 313, which would have the effect of elevating them from potential to substantive items in the project. Absolutely, and I accept that. So I want to go to the recommendation that Cabinet approve the Isle of Wight Council Digital Strategy 2022 to 2027 and establish a programme board led by the portfolio holder for digital trans transformation. That board will be responsible for the establishment of the associated strategy action plan in line with state and outcomes and provide the strategic oversight of business case developments and resulting in project delivery. I look for a seconder. Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. And I was, you did steal my thunder a bit there, Deputy. I was going to say thank you, especially during the COVID again. Um, we have to remember that it was difficult times uh, and how quickly you responded to the tip and got that system up in place. I mean, that was just incredible. So uh, I'll thanks. Thank you. Well done, Roger. Thank you. OK, so now we move on to the hopefully not too lengthy, but very informative part of the meeting, which is item nine on the agenda, which is the cabinet member announcements. Um, I'm going to ask Councillor Paul Fuller to speak first. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Um, members will be aware that the motion that um, was um, agreed at full council um, in December, we have now had a response from that on on that uh, letter that was sent by you leader um to to um michael gove um we've had a response from the right honorable stuart andrew and that response has been circulated to all members of the isle of Wight council this afternoon so um so uh, thank you for for um for that this morning um uh, with respect to the island plan um tomorrow sees the first briefing that we have um, the briefing uh, is open to all members of the Isle of Wight Council and will focus on our five-year land supply, our housing test and um, the need that we need an island planning strategy to be able to take these things forward. Because if we don't, we are in, the we, we are in, in trouble. Um, there, will be another, there will be another briefing on the 25th of March and that will be focusing on the um, island planning strategy headlines. And it is my intention, following a meeting that we had this afternoon, to invite um, IWALC members to that briefing as well, so we can all hear what officers have to say on, on, on that before it goes through to scrutiny and also um, being considered by the um, planning, uh, by, the, by the full council on the 20th of April. Um, I think we're trying to do the very best that we possibly can to make sure that people have enough time to look at that. Um, following that, it will go, then go out to public consultation, and that public consultation is with the planning inspector, 
and um, any any feedback that we can give to the Isle of Wight uh, to, to the Isle of Wight community about engaging in that um, uh, consultation will be will be um, accelerated. You know, it's my intention to make sure that uh, residents know about this consultation and how important if they don't see things in the plan that they like, that they contact the and, um, uh, sorry, the planning inspector direct. Um, that is the next stage. And hopefully we can move forward on that. But thank you. Thank you for that update. And I can confirm the letter was sent to County Hall and then it was sent to my house. So it did go around about the houses by a snail mail or royal mail, um, actually. So um, it did take a bit of a, a bit of, and then had to come back into County Hall again. So, OK, um, Councillor Debbie Andre, is there anything you wish to speak and say? Thank you, Leader. Yes, I would just like to highlight the excellent response that we've had to the term time for the academic year 23-24 consultation. This consultation is still open and ends on the 18th of March, so there's still time to participate. And I'd like to thank everyone who's contributed so far. Just to, um, to follow on, once the consultation has closed, we will analyse the results and a recommendation will come back to Cabinet in May. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andre, and I'm glad you were still there to give that update. Um, I'll come on to Councillor Phil Jordan next, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. I was just going to give two bits of information. Um, good news. One is PFI. Uh, and two is floating bridge. <laughs> the, Where's the good news? <laughs> they're the two bits of good news. Um, uh, just uh, very briefly then, uh, on the floating bridge, because there's been some media, just to confirm to us all that uh, mediation hasn't uh, hasn't finished or stopped, and we as a council did not walk away from mediation, and mediation continues via the mediator uh, as we speak. Uh, I, I can't say any more than that because we don't know where it's going, but it's we are continuing with mediation. Thank you, Chair. OK, yeah, yeah, Lee said as soon as mended. Uh, Councillor Jarman. Yes, thank you, Leader. A couple of things. One is to uh, report that we had a, a very positive letter from the Right Honourable Michael Goh uh, regarding the situation of the uh, illegal invasion of the Ukraine uh, by Russia and advice particularly for local government pension schemes. I have to say that uh, once again, the Isle of Wight was well ahead of the curve here. We'd already uh, instigated an investigation of our investments and were able to reply very positively with a clean sheet uh, to his. And that letter has gone out today and has been released uh, to the press. <clears throat> uh, sec secondly, to report that uh, following the uh, recent full council meeting, uh, we have initiated the preparation for the commercialization of the uh, streaming service through the crematorium. There's some work that needs to go on that uh, uh, relating to our ICT system, staff training, discussions with funeral directors, etc. Uh, and of course, it is tied in very closely with our own commercialization strategy as a council. Uh, and uh, when that comes forward um, within that commercialization role to scrutiny and cabinet, uh, we'll be able to examine the detail of that more fully prior to its activation as per the undertaking given to Councillor Andrew Garrett at the full council meeting. Uh, finally, just to note that we've received quite high praise uh, for the, um, the £450 for the direct cremation service, uh, which is proving uh, to be very popular and quite a relief, uh, I assume, from that uh, praise from those who are financially challenged on the island to ensure that in their, their moment of, uh, of bereavement and loss, uh, that their financial challenges are not exacerbated in any way by the council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jarman. Um, Councillor Karloff, if there's any updates. Uh, thank you, Chair. I note that um, the leader participated in uh, International Women's Day um, um, earlier this week. Um, and uh, likewise, we have uh, World Social Workers' Day, which takes place next week on the 15th. Um, and of course, the uh, Social Care Day of Remembrance, which is for those who passed away during the COVID epidemic, which takes place on the 17th. I think 
an important thing to celebrate now is the fact that um, all of our Isle of Wight um, care homes um, owned by the local, oh, sorry, operated by the local authority have all been um, uh, uh, given a CQC rating of good, which is really good news because it means that we're all operating, operating to a good standard within the local authority and that's really positive news and, and I'm very grateful to all the people who've been involved with, with, with getting to that standard. I think just one quick other thing to say is that we um, last week we had a meeting with the integrated care systems which we are still progressing and working on and developing our, our strategy and moving forward. There's still a lot of unknowns within this, but I particularly wanted to note um, Paul Thistlewood's uh, involvement in terms of how he's been working. Short interlude there for yeah, a disco. Yeah. Uh, Paul Thistlewood works at a national level um, in terms of his work in scrutiny and, um, and he's been particularly looking um, at the operation of how scrutiny will work within a new integrated care system. So it, it, was, it was really good to meet with our partners last week to have a, an open and frank discussion. Thank you, Leader. Thank you. Um, next time, put some music on I can dance to, actually, because that was a bit fast for my liking. OK, um, thank you for that, Councillor Love. Uh, I move on to now Councillor Ian Stevens. I won't take too much uh, time. I've got a fair bit here, but um, uh, what I would say is that uh, I'll touch on the IT again, the beta website build uh, um, and content changes for the initial service areas of adult social care, registrar registrars and planning, parking and fostering are on track uh, with delivery plans. and. Um, Councillors will be um, invited to a soft launch. Um, whatever that involves, I will uh, refer to the gentleman behind me. Um, but also, uh, on a more serious note than that, um, we've had um, throughout uh, the IT industry heightened security alerts, um, and we must uh, pay uh, the uh, correct cognizance to um, understanding what that means and how we how we um, how we go about with our firewalls and making sure that uh, everything is 100% um, uh, clean and clear. I would say that I do have confidence in the way that our firewalls are set up, and uh, I would say that whilst I am, am confident, I'm also aware of uh, situations whereby. Uh, we do get, um, how can I say, predators of all sorts uh, trying to trying to break through um, into IT um, systems. Uh, the installation of team software and equipment uh, is being carried forward at this moment with with regard to uh, rooms within uh, County Hall. Basically, we're trying to uh, allow all rooms within County Hall where we can get a reasonable size meeting to be adapted so that they can be utilised in the months and hopefully the years to come. Um, we've also instigated a strategic project uh, to consider our future business systems. So pro project engineer, I assume. Engagement with a number of councils and uh, suppliers with the most commonly used systems and options appraisal is being undertaken to inform any dis decision making that we make within our, um, our corporate IT department. Um, the current telephony con contract um, is, and the system is running um, to the end of its life and therefore we have to look at what other system uh, we're going to take forward, whether it's a Teams based system or uh, something different. But, uh, we're, we're on to that at this moment in time, but it will, it will be, um, uh, how can I say, considered over, over a period, but not too long because, as I say, the um, present uh, system is nearing its uh, uh, life's end with um, uh, guarantees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we have to be mindful that that is our gateway, that is what our residents and our, and our island businesses utilise to come into, uh, to come into our authority. 
I want to just touch on that because I, I was I was on a Teams meeting this morning with regu regulatory services, and I'll tell you what, they're the unsung heroes. So I hear about every everyone else going around and, and doing uh, various um, uh, services and uh, extending their remit and all that, but I've got people out there in, li in licensing and um, uh, environmental health and what have you, have been changing, uh, changing and adapting to, to various roles. And I think that, you know, we don't, we don't hear so much when it was really, um, I, I felt when uh, myself and the, and the director were online to them, that we can actually say a big thank you because quite honestly, as you, as you know, leader, it, it's been an uphill struggle. There's been an uphill struggle through, throughout the pandemic. And these people that just have a label of, okay, well, no, the environmental health officer or whatever, but they work their socks off for, for, the, for, for this authority and for the community. And to actually just be able to say a big thank you to them was, was something else this morning. I just want to say that we, we've got a few moves and changes Coroner's office is on the move. We know that Jubilee stores, we've got um, uh, regulatory services coming up onto the campus of County Hall. Um, so we've got a lot of things on the go. Um, safer streets, as you say, that, that's going to have enhanced uh, CCTV and ride with a bit of luck. Um, but I want to mention also avian flu. Avian flu, um, we found some. Uh, Wildfowl, bird um, over over in the um, rural rural side of the Isle of Wight, and um, yes, it's um, been discovered that it's, it's had an avian avian flu, and we're doing checks on that at the moment. So that's our first uh, case. So all I say is, um, Islanders beware and uh, take precautions with your pets and poultry. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Yes, sad news with the avian flu. Um, OK, Councillor Jonathan Bacon and then Julie Jones-Evans. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Leader. Um, like Councillor Stevens, I have a quite a, a list of things here, but I will aim to follow his example of brevity. Um, there has been a report, uh, several reports this week, obviously, about a serious fly tip in Porchfield. Um, I, I think it has now been made clear that was reported properly, fairly swiftly, investigated the culprit found within a matter of hours and a hefty fixed penalty fine was issued. Um, and the rubbish also cleared, most importantly. Uh, I would say to people that if you do see something, please do report it. It's, it's all very well putting it on Facebook, spreading it on social media, but that doesn't achieve what we want to see, which is the culprit's caught and the rubbish cleared up. So a release went out today um, giving clear details about how to report a fly tip by phone, email or online. Um, I'm hoping that the press will uh, make sure that information goes out whenever this is seen to be an issue. And I, I do hope we can work with the press a lot on this um, because you know, when we get things out there, we gather information quickly. This can be dealt with effectively. Um, Second thing I should say, in, in one of those reports, um, I did see that there was a comment that the fly tipping task force stalled. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what was uh, being alluded to there because we haven't got a fly tipping task force, but we have got the task and finish group. And that very much is still proceeding with the next meeting to take place shortly. There's just so much information uh, and stuff to deal with there. It's it's proving much slower than I hoped, but it is still very much active and that work is going on. Uh, in relation to waste, um, some good news. I, I've been desperately trying to find the name of the resident who I would like to give credit to this idea, uh, credit this idea with, uh, and I'm afraid my uh, email isn't working properly, but um, it, it's been a pain for many people to have to take batteries to shops, supermarkets, to be able to dispose of them properly. I'm hoping that in the next month or so, uh, we will have uh, the ability to collect batteries on the um, properly on, on the waste collection lorries. 
it is a problem when they get put into the general rubbish. Um, it has been a source of explosions, fires, etc., at the waste collection plant. So there will be some publicity coming out shortly to say how you can put batteries out and they can be taken from your home to stop that happening. Uh, and also following that, we should be able to have a, a collection of small electrical items possible at the doorstep as well. Um, Slightly different tack, uh, trees. Uh, we're bringing forward a tree strategy. Um, and uh, That will probably be connected to the green canopy, which is obviously a, a feature of what is being taken forward to the Jubilee this year. I'm hoping that will be before this body in the early summer. Um, and it's going to be, I think, very valuable for the island as a beautiful place. And also in relation to cli our climate change strategy, uh, in the most simple terms, if we lose a tree, we're going to plant two in its place. Um, we're going to plant them in the right place and we're going to plant the right type of tree. That's uh, summarizing it massively, but that, that's the general aim. Um, we're bringing forward the new Climate and Environment Board. I'm hoping the uh, first meeting of that is going to be announced very shortly. Um, members will recall we uh, took forward the Dark Skies program in a cabinet paper a little while ago, so it was very pleasing to see that Compton Bay has been announced as one of the top 10 locations for stargazing in the UK. In fact, it was number two in that list. Uh, the other two are in Northern Ireland or Scotland, so Compton Bay is much more accessible and warmer as well, so much the best place to go if given the choice. Uh, and lastly, um, I will mention for the fans of the beaver, uh, you may have noticed coming through your door, the beaver consultation survey um, from the Hampshire and uh, Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust. Um, it's a useful little document. I would encourage people to fill that in, uh, particularly you, Councillor Jordan. And um, it, it's uh, an interesting wildlife project, but it also potentially relates to uh, dealing with floods. I know it's caused some concern to people that they feel that beavers may be uh, part of the problem, but certainly having had a visit to one of the proposed locations for uh, the release, should this go ahead, and there are quite a lot of technical issues to be dealt with, um, but having uh, had a, a visit and a long discussion with officers of the Hampshire and Isle, Isle of Wight Wildlife Trust, I think there are potentially a lot of positives here and the ability to deal with some flooding issues in a, in a natural and sustainable way. So I would encourage people, if that comes through your door, um, to say what you think about the beavers. Thank you very much. Gosh, Councillor Jones Evans. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, so it's got a few things to update, to update you on since last month. So firstly, the Island Creative Network, which was funded by the Isle of Wight Council and the Art Council England, um, is gaining momentum with 36 practitioners already created up, sorry, already signed up for the programme support to develop their businesses and craft. Uh, yesterday, Councillor Baker and I spent the day as guests of the Solent LEP and Southampton City of Culture bid team at Solent University in Southampton um, and exploring the economic and social value of creativity and culture. Uh, we learned that the annual value to the UK economy from this industry is £116 billion. Just to put this into perspective, the UK fishing industry is worth £890 million annually. Gaming was also highlighted as a lead sector, and of course we have in this very same street where we are now, a stainless, internationally renowned stainless game. So it's, it's very important for us locally as well, I can relate to that. On the island, we have 30% of all the people in work are actually employed in the creative industry. So we know it's, it's such an important part, which is why we're looking at the creative um, regeneration as an important part of our, our corporate plan. Um, Southampton will know on the 21st of March whether the bid for to be a uh, city of culture uh, 2025 um, will have moved on to the final four cities. So we'll know in, uh, say, week Monday. Um, two weeks ago, I met with Arts Council, and this is an update really, and I was actually overwhelmed by the number of organisations and individual practitioners that are applying for support as part of the Iron being a priority place. I've been asked by Councillor Garrett to update on the Newport Post Office issue. Uh, through the local partnership Shaping Newport, we are exploring all possibilities to bring back this vital service. 
The post office are visiting the IDI next month to look at a couple of possible locations because the market has not responded in the year since the opportunity is being advertised. I need to reiterate, though, councils are not allowed to run post offices. We have to find a different mechanism um, should we um, be moving on. But I just want to reassure um, the, uh, Councillor Garrett because he couldn't be here this evening. Um, I want to thank our economic development team for moving mountains to get the Omicron grants processed in the terribly short window given by government. And so they're making great progress and a lot of the money's gone out the door and with the, the second half of that it will be um, going out before the end of, end of this month. Um, helping business on the island become more energy efficient, which is a hot topic at the moment, as we all know, um, is the main objective of the Green Impact Programme, which we launched that, relaunched that last week. So that's free. Um, it's on our website. It's on the, uh, the Chamber website. And we have support from the Isle of Wight Council. And that also link into the low case um, support as well, where businesses can actually um, apply for funding to, again, become more, more environmentally sustainable. So we're excited about that. Um, key consultations are underway. We've got the House of Pedestrian Movements um, and the future of the Guild Hall. Now, we've got the last part of the consultation is this Saturday. Um, St Thomas's Square Market Days are doing that. So you can go and, and look, at the, uh, look at the plans for, plans for the Guild Hall, put your thoughts forward, what you'd like to see, that, that iconic building that's um, owned by the Isle of Wight Council, uh, what you'd like to see there. Um, the consultation for the Harbour Master Plan SBD, um, that's uh, going to into say, um, a planning document that finished on the 21st of March. That's available online to fill out. Um, we're making good progress on Branston Farm. And as you know, Lida, um, we've got the, you've invited <coughs> over um, Anne-Marie, um, the CEO of the, the Sewant Lep. She's coming over at the end of the month. Um, we've got 15 new homes, um, phase one nearing completion. A lot of interest in the business units with people already committed. Um, the pandemic has affected material costs, labour supply, and a subsequent delay of completion of some of the elements from April until June. So slight slippage there. Um, this one's sort of a double handery with Councillor Jarman, but I'm, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the advantage to talk for both of us. Um, so in, in anticipation of fuel cost increases in these far buildings, the energy savings achieved from the work under, undertaken using the £3.5 million pounds of UK government Salix funding will help mitigate some of this impact by increased use of renewables. Renewables, For instance, Dina Leisure Centre will have 50% solar powered from May 2022. So I think that's really, really important that we've got that funding in. We've spent it on our buildings so we protect our services. So that's it from me, Leader. Thank you. I have to say... This is why we're all exhausted, because seriously, the amount of work that's being done, and I know I can't thank my cabinet enough. Um, I know they're doing tw only 12 to 15 hour days. We, we were regularly in communication at four in the morning where we're going through so much stuff in our heads. Um, and I sincerely thank each and every one of you for the effort that you put in and the fact that you really care about the island and you care about the people. Um, and that's why that's why you're here. So I'm, I'm very proud of you all. Could you pass on my thanks to Will Miles and all that he's doing for the Visit Isle of Wight stuff? Because we do know the visitor economy is extremely important, um, as was the shipbuilding industry today with Peter Morton and the contracts and the work that's happening down there today. Um, so I think with, I think the island and, you know, you, you're really doing yourselves and all the staff that have to support. I've, I've just got to thank you. Um, you just reminded me, sorry, there was one more um, item I meant to, meant to say um, in my excitement to do all the rest of the news. Of course, Philip, visit Isle of Wight. Um, they uh, they um, were the, they facilitated the visit by um, Grace Dent and uh, Ainsley Harriet just this month. Um, they've done a, they are one of the cookery programmes on Channel 5, I believe. It's going to be all on the, on the Isle of Wight. And they went all around the island cooking, eating, exploring, and they had a fantastic time. And we'll be hearing a bit more from Ainsley um, during the, the social media that will follow that, that programme when it comes out. Superb. OK, so um, without further ado, we move on to item number 10 on the agenda, which is the consideration for the forward plan. Is there anyone anyone wishes to add or take away or say anything on the forward plan? Just keep that for noting then. So we move on to item number 11 on the agenda, which is members question time. I've got a very lengthy um, question from Councillor Stephen Hendry. We will give him a written response because it's 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 about traffic orders. Did you want to come in, Councillor Jordan? It's a long... Uh, Lee, that's already been done. A, a, a reply has been sent a couple of days ago. 
Thank you very much. I'll bring in Councillor Daryl Pitcher now. Um, who uh, do you want me to read the question, or are you going to read it, Daryl? Um, is this working? Seems to me. Um, I'm happy for you to read them. I think you've sort of stolen my thunder on the second question because that's more or less answered, but I'm sure you'll say a few more words on it. Um, but before you do go, dive into those, with my other hat on, I'd like to uh, thank you on behalf of the Robbery's Legion for uh, reaffirming the Council's commitment to the Armed Forces Covenant earlier. Um, I'll take that tonight. I've got a, a branch meeting in Cowes and on Saturday I've got a county meeting and I'll take it to both of those and let them know on behalf of the Council. Um, but yeah, Carrie, please do read them. OK, um, and thank you for the uh, for the commitment that you do to the British Legion too, Daryl. Um, it's, it's, it's greatly appreciated, and to each of them, because it's hard keeping the committees going and keeping the volunteers, I do understand. So, um, uh, Councillor Pitcher has asked, what action are the Isle of Wight Council taking to mitigate the looming energy affordability crisis that could plunge the majority of island population into fuel poverty? So the uh, response is um, energy affordability. Have you got this, Daryl, in... You have got the response, not yet. Okay. Um, energy, I'll give you this copy. Energy affordability is an international issue linked to the avail availability of gas and oil in the main, which is significantly impacted by Russia's invasion on Ukraine and the economic sanctions imposed on it. Therefore, the council is limited in the direct action it can take to support its residents, much as it would, would like to, and it must look to the national government to take lead in response to the significant challenges. In the short term, we are doing all we can to issue the government-provided £150 energy grant to all households in council tax bands A to D as quickly as possible. Although this would be even quicker if we already had people's bank accounts details. So I would encourage through this um, media where anyone, um, if they want to be entitled to that grant, uh, if they could get in touch with us to give their bank details. I know it seems like a very strange thing to be doing, uh, giving out bank details, but that's the way the government has said the, this, this funding has to be given. Um, we're also waiting for the final information from government to conform how we can allocate discretionary funding for energy grants to support vulnerable people and individuals on low incomes that do not pay council tax or that pay council tax for properties in bands um, E to H. Um, and with that, you know, we are very supportive of um, uh, Ray Harrington Vale, although I think he's retired now, um, and the Footprint Trust. No, he's not. Okay, the Footprint, the Footprint Trust, um, and all they do to help and have been for years. So, you know, if people, um, that's a good direction to put them in. Okay, so the next thing is about the steps the Isle of Wight Council are taking to support the Ukrainian people. Um, we will be issuing a number of um, uh, links that people can uh, go on to, Daryl, so that they can um, uh, donate but to the right people um, uh, and where they can help. We will be trying to do um, a campaign so that we are prepared if, if the government says that we can have people um, coming over, that you know that we can try to get something organised. We have we have no um, council homes, sadly, available. We don't have them for our own people. Um, it's very it's a very sad situation. We will definitely, um, Councillor Ian Stevens, myself, and and. Um, the new temporary chief ex heck um, will are working absolutely uh, uh, 100 miles an hour on this housing and how we progress that forward. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, is Councillor Spink um, still online? Councillor Spink, did you want to ask your question? Okay, I'll move on then. Um, we, we have got a response, so we will send him a written response. Thank you. Um, I move on now to um, the final question, which is from Councillor Jeff Brody. I will read the question out and um, Councillor Love will respond. At paragraph 41 of the Dementia Strategy paper, the following lofty statement is made. Our Alliance administration celebrates equality and diversity in our communities. 
Can the Cabinet member, Councillor Love, explain to me and other concerned islanders how this celebration fits in with the unapologised posting of the Council's leader on her social media last November of a racially, racially offensive image and his own refusal to even consider its offensiveness at full Council recently? Would the Cabinet member be as relaxed and unconcerned about social media postings by a leading public figure that were offensive to other people with different protected characteristics? Councillor Love is going to, he has written a response, but he's going to do it via the computer. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'm using a new piece of technology which I haven't used before, but this is my response. I understand better than most. I'm someone who falls within two of the nine protected characteristics under the Equalities Act 2010. I haven't continued even today to suffer horrendous hatred and I have had to fight all my life to be free of the chains of discrimination. Some of those chains still remain. I and many other LGBT plus are still not living without an occasional glance over one's shoulder to see if we are in fact safe. I have been terrorized and traumatized by hatred over the years and I put my head above the parapet to support and represent the hidden, frightened and silenced voice of others. This has made me and my partner a target but we battle on in the face of it as there is no other way. Some of our friends have committed suicide, some too frightened to tell families of their love and life. Those who passed away who I called friends. Some died in agony because of discrimination of HIV in the 1990s and I still carry their secrets and pain. Today I still cannot bring myself to hold my partner's hand in public for fear of hatred and violence. That's before I say anything about what it feels like to struggle and be treated as though I was worthless because of a lifelong struggle I have had with the written word. I truly know what bullying is, to be terrified and to consider suicide as a way out. I chose to be someone who would stand up, taking personal risks in doing so, lay down in the road to protest for equality, human rights and educate people about equality and diversity so we can all live a better, happier life. And yes, my extended family is of mixed race. You take the opportunity within your question to challenge my commitment to equality and make no allowance to the fact, which you knew then and today, of my mother's passing and how I returned to the island early leaving my family grieving when I should not have done so. I returned to undertake my commitment to represent the people of my ward in that full council meeting. I was emotional, as I am now and did not respond directly to the issues raised although it may seem so. I responded in my disappointment and grief, to the hostile situation, chaos and manipulation of politics for personal party political gain. Having made my comments, I then left to recover myself. I resent bitterly this slur on my character today by someone I respect for being different in their political approach. What I conclude is that these questions are nothing more than attempt to hurt individuals, to create a narrative of racism which does not exist and damage the public confidence in people and our island council. I can also better understand when there are opportunities to celebrate equality and diversity on our island such as in the opportunities both my partner and I, our hidden communities, our council and many others have worked hard to create, supporting and encouraging island people. I am sure, as does my ASC director, who will confirm that equality and diversity are celebrated and engaged in all things and that I champion and ask questions on these matters during our meetings. My life experiences have taught me to try judge people on the facts of a matter and their actions, to resist jumping to simplistic conclusions. I am totally confident having known Councillor PC Wilcox for many years she is honest in her determination to celebrate and support diversity, inclusivity and equality. Make no mistake, I would simply step away from this administration if I thought otherwise. Councillor Brody has misplaced and burdened me with his anger while not offering any meaningful solutions for the positive engagement and better implementation of equality policy, diversity and, and inclusive practices. What do you want to see changed to create a more positive inclusive future for island people? None of us are perfect, we make mistakes, and it is what we learn, how we deal and respond from that which truly matters. 
Anger will only create anger and that will resolve nothing and I will not be diverted away from this important dementia strategy which we bring forward today in an attempt to be more inclusive, transparent and creative. Q. The strategy seems... And that is my response, Jen.